we should theoretically be live here. What? Yeah. Ah! Live and alive. And also here. Um, I just like the comment there. Somebody said Guardians is, I don't know this, how old this chat is there, but Guardians is going to be their new comfort movie, like Serenity or Fifth Element. Wholeheartedly agree. I have seen it twice. I'm ready to see it a third time. And I, I, I put it up there. I, I, I like Serenity. I like it better than Serenity. And like, I, I, uh, not to take anything away from Serenity, but yeah, I, love, yeah, love, no, love I, I, I agree a hundred percent, man. It, it, um, uh, I got home. Yes, I watched it again yesterday, and it's like from beginning to end, it's like, and I tweeted it. I was like, "God damn, that movie just has so much heart," and I just loved it, and uh, it's great. And what I, for me, for like the second viewing was is like the first time, like there are some kind of like dips in the road and some potholes and some little speed bumps and stuff that yeah. kind of like, Meh. but second time I know they're there, and I can just be like, "It's cool, it's cool." Oh my god, it's yeah, in a big movie. way, yeah. There we go. Uh, it just it's just it's like Gunn just wanted to fill that movie with fun and joy. So much so. Yeah. Hey man, uh let me let's just do a mic check and uh uh since we're uh running late and it's all my fault, um we'll just jump in. Testing one, two, check, 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 check. All right, let me hear you, Justin. Yo, mama. <laughs> Andrew? Check, check, check your head. All right. They're literally, Brian, check your head. Uh, oh, it's, it's, it's uh, I believe, still attached? Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when you get to video, I think uh, Justin and I got some cool headwear. Oh, James, like, rubbing it in already. Mm. All right, we're back. We're back, and we're on fire. Are you fire. on CDN? What's that? You're on Meta CDN right now? Should be. I don't know if we're live on Diamond Club. Yeah, I'm just trying to put that up. And you know what I will do? I'm going to move you to undo that. I'm going to move that up. There you go. Hello, Governor. Um... Right on. Okay, so Diamond Club is updated. We could tweet out that we're live. Oh, wait, hold on. The Meta CDN says that nobody's streaming on the Meta CDN. Um, let's look at output settings. That should be. It says that it's uh, low, mid, and HD. Uh, not Daily doing motion. Twitch. Daily motion. Um, and the uh, Auto Raptor. Has already come up with daily motion. Gosh darn it. Beep, beep, beep. Well, do you just want to roll with daily motion since we're 40 minutes late? Yeah. All right. So it is on daily motion? Yeah. Right. Uh, who's playing jungle music? The daily motion thing. All right. I just wanted to make sure that it was live. Okay. Uh, live now for weird things followed by cord killers in diamond club TV. All right. We are recording in five, four, three, two. Boys and girls, ghouls and goblins, welcome to Weird Things, the podcast. We're going to jump right into the middle here. Joining me is Mr. Brian Brushwood. Hey, do you see it? Do I look different? Do I look different than usual? Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm wearing a hat. I got this hat. It's got a little Tom Merritt badge. Uh-huh. I got a Merritt badge. Oh, you got a hat. Yeah. I have a hat, too. Justin has a hat. Uh, yeah. So wait, wait you guys say your hat? Justin Robert Young, by the way, other host here. I'm Andrew Maine. Well, I got I got me a hat that says SpaceX on it because SpaceX is the best, and anybody who doesn't have a SpaceX hat is a real pile of garbage. Yeah, I got a hat that says SpaceX on the back. Yeah, hold on. I got a hat that says Dragon on the front. Dragon on the front. SpaceX in the back. I swear, I just wanted to grab a sharpie and ruin my hat and just write shabbily <laughs> SpaceX on there. But then I realized I don't have to. 
because one week from yesterday, we are less than seven days from our grand SpaceX adventure. Uh, I, like, I'm in Texas. You're in L.A. Uh, Justin's in uh, Oakland. We're flying out. Going to be joined by Tom Merritt, and we're, I'm flying out my wife and daughter because of our inside sleeper agent who's going to give us hands-on touchy-feelies to SpaceX. That's right. You a little excited? I, I, I was afraid. I don't want to say anything. I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> no. uh, okay, so uh, the cruise director. You know, you know I'm at medical, medical school right now, and the cruise director, uh, like there was some day that it snowed on the, on the, uh, on the, the boat, so it was a snow day, and they're like, oh, we'll make it up. We'll, we'll play Parcheesi on this Saturday. And everyone was like, yeah, Saturday works for me. It works for me. It works for me. And we're like, well, I guess that's when we're going to take our final exams. And I was like, um, guys, it's kind of a big deal. This is two months in the works to go to SpaceX. I'm flying <laughs> out the wife and kids. Like, I'll, I'll play Parcheesi if you want, but, but I'd rather not. <laughs> and so Can I tell you, I'm like... I haven't been following all the narrative threads on Night Attack there for a moment, and I'm like going, what the hell? All right, and he's like, just don't worry. You're going to get it. And you're like, I don't know. It sounds complicated. He's like, just don't worry. You're going to get it. And then you see Inception like, oh. So Interstellar, I am, you know, Nolan doing space movie, Matthew McConaughey, kind of like uh, a counterpoint to his contact role, you know. Um, excited. But anyhow, gentlemen, I'm sending you guys into space. I'm putting you onto a spacecraft. I'm sending you out to space. Uh, any particular area of space or just sort of general space, space in general? I will tell you, but you're not allowed to Google it. Okay. All right. Hold on. Let me, uh, that works for me. Hang on one second. Uh, while you're go, okay, you could, oops, <laughs> I'm trying to, uh, try to get our live distribution set Here, up wait, again. Hold on. So set it up for me again. Forming stars, gases, all this other stuff, right? Right? Okay. But uh, it's going to be a special mission. It's an exciting right. mission. Brian, uh, are you there? Yeah, no, it'd be a special mission, exciting mission. Right. I like both special and exciting. Right. So it's going to be like the Sagittarius. It's a Sagittarius cloud, right? What are you going to find there? Why did I send you guys there? Wait, uh, uh, I mean, nebulas are the remnants of exploded stars. So if we're just going to a nebula, I feel like we'll just see, uh, I don't know, a few uh, heavy elements forged from the heart of an exploding star. It seems they're just clouds, right? There's nothing there. Well, they're clouds of something. They're actually slightly more complex than just some base elements. What do you mean? Well, I know, like, like I know that, that, that stars uh, uh, only go as high. Is it, is it iron that they form or, car or carbon before? No. Carbon has to be formed by exploding stars. I, I don't know what else there is there. There's some remnant heat. Well, there's free form stuff forming complex molecules, everything else. I'm going to tell you, you guys are going to find. Are you ready for this? I've, uh, oh. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. 10 billion, billion, billion liters of what? Water? Nope. Methane? Cool Kool-Aid. <laughs> nope. Uh, 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 dog, dog, dog urine. Nope. Okay, liters. You say liters, which, but it wouldn't be, uh, it wouldn't be liquid out there. Um, uh, it could be a liquid in a gaseous state. Okay. Well, he, he, uh, uh, okay, so if it's from an exploded star, there's not going to be a lot of helium, hydrogen, uh, bismuth. <laughs> no. What is it? Give up. Methane. No. No. Alcohol. Booze. Booze. Bing, bing. Alcohol. Oh! oh! <laughs> nebula. The Sagittarius Just good old boys oh. never meaning no harm. <laughs> they finally found a big ass drunken star. <laughs> Making their way the only way they know how. The Sagittarius B2 cloud more. has 10 billion, billion, billion it's liters loud. of alcohol floating in it. Oh my God, that's amazing. Uh, so so uh, uh, best beer run ever, is that what's going on? Most of it is undrinkable, but some of it's ethanol. That's awesome. I had that weird thought, like, uh, you know, you, you drink a lot at night, and then the next day you're running, 
And you're like, man, I have a lot of energy. It was when I was dieting heavy. And I'm like, probably because I'm fueled by ethanol at the moment, <laughs> which, is, which was the only time of uh, ethanol uh, subsidy I didn't mind. But on touch. So it's out there, guys, waiting for us. I mean, how cool would that be if you had some sort of interstellar drive <laughs> like to do a beer run, to literally oh, go God. out there and like scoop some of this cloud up and like be drinking Sagittarius B2? Willie Nelson is uh, is just ready. He's ready right now. This is what gets him into space. He's no, he's he's waiting on the the the, the weed black hole to to arrive or something. <laughs> <laughs> hey, anything's. Po- I mean, that's going to be like if we find a planet with all sorts of other kind of life. You know, that's going to be a thing. Is trying to figure out. Uh, I kinda lo- what can we smoke and eat? Yeah, dude, I-, I love the idea of space bootleggers, and then you're 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 chased by the inter- intergalactic space cops. You go, I love it. Let's go, let's go to that small moon. <laughs> <laughs> so, just if you need another reason to justify going to space, folks, ten billion, billion, billion liters. How I I, I want to get an example. I want to know how much that is. I'm going to go to Wolfram Alpha here oh, and find God. out. You know, well, oh, okay, yeah, I was thinking about this, and I almost went to Wolfram Alpha. I, I, it is astonishing to me the little bits of strange trivia that, uh, that it just knows automatically, like average population of uh, a certain spot. Um, like, for example, right now I'm going to go to Wolfram Alpha. So those of you who know what Wolfram Alpha is, there's uh, Stephen Wolfram is a is mathematical genius who created the software suite for solving complex mathematical problems. It's used a lot in the sciences. And he created a website, wolframalpha.com, which it's a computational engine. It has all sorts of data from being able to do computer calculations. It's got population data, et cetera. You can type in your name. It'll tell you how many people have that name. You can t- type in what year, et cetera. It has a lot of, it can tell you where planets are right now, what's the distance from the Earth to Mars at this point. Where Google and other search engines just try to find where that data is else, elsewhere, Wolfram Alpha actually calculates that. So, so okay, this is interesting. When it even, like I just wrote in average speed of toenail growth, and it says, it uh, doesn't understand my query, and it says, however, I do know what a toenail is, basically. <laughs> so it's like, uh, it means uh, the, the nail at the end of a toe. Um, all right, so so uh, 10 billion. I found the answer. How, how did you type it? Just 10 billion, billion. They gave ten, and they gave me in liters, and then I typed in liters. Do you want to know the answer? Liters. Uh, yes. What is it? It's about a thousand times the volume of Earth, or about 0.70% the volume of Jupiter. Uh, oh, I guess I did. How many billions? Oh, I 10 billion, billion, billion? Liters, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It says it comes up uh, seven times the volume of Jupiter. Uh, uh-huh. I'll tell you another fun thing. Oh, I, I think I just did a billion, billion, billion liters there. I like your answer even better. Yeah, dude. Seven Jupiters. That's seven a hangover Jupiters. in the making. Ha- dude, uh, yeah. What, what is that? Um, we got so wasted last night, man. We had seven Jupiters. It was so <laughs> crazy. There was the uh, we we did a scam school like four three or four years ago about this the the weird numerical artifact that in any random item whether it's a stock market price or the uh, uh, you know like the, the 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 volume of alcohol that you know uh, for example like um, uh, you know the seven times the volume of Jupiter like the odds of it being the first digit are most likely to be one, less likely to be two, less likely to be three, all the way down to where basically it's twice as lucky or twice as likely that any random number will start with a one, two, or three compared to a five through nine combined. Like uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. So we played, we started playing a game of like, uh, for example, let's say, let's say uh, size of Jupiter, Jupiter, I'll put times, cause you could do that on Wolfram Alpha. And get, give me something random, Justin. Uh, t- size of Jupiter times twenty four ounces. <laughs> All right. Well, that's that's not an arbit- that, That's not a random number since you're picking like a specific number. So you might say like population of oh, okay. Des Moines, which is I'm sh- sure how they love. Oops. Yeah. I N E S. Des Moines. And so uh, the size of Jupiter times the population Des Moines is. Four point four three six seven oh, million persons per mile squared. That's Jupiter, Florida. Oh, 
Oh, that's air, hilarious. Yeah, Jupiter, Florida uh, against Des Moines, Iowa. That's fine. That's fine either. Uh, but yeah, totally. at any rate, like, uh, like, oh, man, I wish I could remember the, uh, the uh, I'm sure you could find it in seconds here, Andrew, uh, the name of the uh, number theory, most likely. I can't find it. I'm too dumb at the moment. I don't know what that is. Like, it's like a Fibonacci kind of thing, but different. Um, let's see. I guess I'll just type in most likely to start with one. Benford's Law. That's what it's called. Ah. Benford's Law is the, uh, the first digit law. Re- refers to the frequency distribution of digits in many, but not all, real-life sources of data. In this distribution, the number one occurs as the leading digit 30% of the time. So if it's a random ass anything, about a third of the time, it will start with one. So between one and two together, uh, you're up to like 45% chance. And uh, I, yeah, you're over 50% chance of it starting with a one, two, or three. You're also over 50% likely to have a fish stick sandwich burrito with Ben. For <laughs> <laughs> well played. But, but because, uh, because Wolfram Alpha knows so much of this stuff, it's so amazing just to try to uh, find... Random ass stuff. Uh, here my, uh, my favorite is still spurious correlations. Oh, my God. Yes. We had, the uh, number one right now, if you go there, I'll send you the link to uh, uh, it. Tyler Vegan, T-Y-L-E-R-V-I-G-E-N. Yep. Uh, U.S. Go. spending on science, space, and technology correlates <laughs> with suicides by hanging strangulation and suffocation. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> Speaking of which, I guess uh, Cosmos is now on DVD on Netflix already. Oh, cool. What's a DVD? Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> There's some people who still love physical media, though. I, I, you know, when I got my apartment out here in L.A. Uh, and I made this effort to not, like, uh, collect stuff, yeah. you know, although now I've got, like, <laughs> I've got a whole half my place has taken over some insane projects. Um, I like to do everything on iTunes. It's like I just like the idea of just it's in the cloud, except for when my cable goes down and I can't get internet. <laughs> yeah. Now, are you worried about the, the fact that technically you can do or say something that, that Apple won't like and all of a sudden they just say it's all ours now? You don't get access? To me in particular or... Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I, yeah. Like, like, do you worry about that? Because somebody, uh, somebody sent in because we talk a lot about cloud-based storage and licensing rights on cord killers. And this guy was saying, you know, he he prefers physical media for that r- reason. I, I mean, I think that you have a there is like there has been a track record like Google Video, like Google, like twice totally like you've had stuff I'm like oh no we changed our mind we don't want to get into the space anymore and 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 i i don't think that they i i i'm not as into it at other places as doing it i don't buy i buy my physical media from amazon but i buy my and i buy my ebooks from amazon for the most part because uh i think they're very serious about staying in that market for a long time it's yeah. they're true to their core apple you know where i think apple's interests are I still have, I opened up iTunes and I found I had like, you know, a big trouble in little, uh, you know, China? big trouble in China. Yeah, I had, a, I had a download or whatever I could still use. The Brian was like when they first came out with videos on iTunes that I bought like for an iPod, you know, and they still honored that. And I'm like, that. I, I had a similar situation where I ran across and I and I just looked and it had re-downloaded to my computer, which I purchased back in I want to say 2006 maybe the the Muse video Knights of Cydonia. Did you ever see that? It's like this sci-fi western mashup. It's so in in the style of 80s uh, uh, bad movies. Anyway, uh, yeah, no, I I like that stuff and and that's why I like Steam uh, with video game purchases and I don't want to be overextended in all these different marketplaces. I just want to, I want to remain ignorant and dumb, but everybody wants to force you into, into joining all these clubhouses, which just makes it a giant pain in the butt. Yeah. Like I don't, I, I don't have Facebook messenger. I'm still using Facebook on my phone. And if I get a message, I'll like, I'll check on my computer, but like, I like iMessages. 
I'm happy with that. Uh, you know, I liked SMS. I like doing that. I don't want another messaging app to go do that. I don't want it. I don't need to have two different places because I know their goal is to have is they want to be that. You know, and maybe I'm old fashioned or whatever, but. You know, I like I use Instagram, love it, and that's a Facebook company, and keep that there. But there is that I, I kind of like. I know I go for this media here, this media here. Um, well, but I also it's like, TV, like if you want way. to, if you consider yourself a a connoisseur of something or a fan of movies or television shows, it's like there is an element of of how many places do you want to have that digital footprint, even with it being as as super. Uh, convenient as it is like at this point i think we all probably have bought stuff that is honored for us on amazon and itunes right sure but if there was another service that had a really cool purchasing option or had exclusive content for which we would really really want it would at some point that stretches a little bit and you don't want to keep Hard. track of like oh no i have this here and i have that there but then again that just might be us being old grandpa weird things well, like like i don't want to pay attention to but two well, well, digital warehouses and, and, and plus on top of that like good hygiene means that you have to get you have to keep uh, uh passwords different passwords for each ones that are strong that also you don't write down because that's that's the real old man thing to do is to write down your passwords where somebody can find them so it's just like it's like hey, there's a there's a value i'll pay money to be dumb and i guess i'm already doing that with like last pass can i can i tell you what uh like what, you know, like I'm again, I, iTunes for my movies and TV shows and Apple TV, what they finally did, they should have done this a long time ago, but they finally did though, is now all those iTunes extras, all that extra content is now accessible on the Apple TV. And I started going through all the movies I have and I've got a couple hundred of all the different stuff that I have, like, oh my God, here's this cool behind the scenes and here's this alternate stuff where I don't have to pick up and grab a DVD and put it in my player or whatever, you know? I'll tell you what, I think a lot about like where they, um, it's not just the the content we acquire the rights to. It's also how much of our own personality and story we put in everything. Like, like I remember sitting down and spending an hour and a half to train Netflix on what kind of movies I like. And and for years since then, I've enjoyed. I thought their recommendations have been pretty good. You know, pretty. It says we think you'll like this three and a half stars. And I'll finish. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, I, I just I hate the idea of all of those little bits and pieces getting lost just because I'm running off to some other shiny thing mm -hmm. somewhere else, you know? It's the lock-in, you know, and that's, that's, that, that certainly, there is that. Uh, gentlemen, I'm going to change topics for a moment. I'm going to go back to a touch-up on what we talked about. Last week, we, we talked about the report of this space drive. Ah, everybody laughed at this man who said he had the impossible engine, and then other people built it and said it might not be so impossible. What lies ahead for this curious device, Andrew? Well, more laughter. <laughs> oh, no. It's still, it is such a controversial thing. So the recap, last week we talked about NASA's Advanced Propulsion Laboratory tested their version of a drive that basically what it is, it's a microwave antenna in a sealed chamber, and it's apparently able to get a little bit of movement forward without any use of propellant, without pushing against anything, which violates... Laws of physics as we understand them. And the laws of physics are a way we understand our model of the universe. And that causes a bit of, you know, uh, questions. So there's been some more discussion about it. And, uh, you know, you have some people who are like, hey, listen, if you're claiming you're violating the laws of physics, you have some, better have some really good evidence. And we've seen, and almost in every case prior to something like this, where we have this, hey, it's faster than the light, it's this, whatever, there's been experimental error. XKCD had a really great comic where they talked about how they're putting two kilowatts of energy into the system and they're measuring like two micronewtons of force, which sounds like there's a lot of room for error. But we don't know. We don't know. And I found a really cool breakdown on wire.co.uk, which is the Wired's UK site. I sent it to Brian. And they break it down with instead of just being, you know, you could just say like, ah, it breaks laws of physics, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to pay attention to it. Well, okay, but... The really, really interesting things tend to be there, and sometimes we find out things like, you know, superconductivity is something, and they mention this. We don't have a, an agreed-upon explanation for how superconductivity works. It falls within the framework of how the world, you know, the universe works. It doesn't violate any physical laws, but it was one of those things that we still are. It's a phenomenon. We have theories. We don't know. Well, that's the double-edged sword, isn't it? Like, uh, for, for really revolutionary things... 
Like, uh, uh, you, we have to get to the extraordinarily precise small level to start to see surprising things to change our models of physics. Um, uh, for example, you know, the, the, the neutrinos uh, going faster than the speed of light was such an effect that, that it looked like the neutrinos appeared before whatever, but it was a case where, you know, it, we're, we're looking at such fine precision detail that, that we had, a, you know, a mar it was within the margin of error is what it turns out. However, on the flip side, you've got something like uh, the predictions with the Higgs, Higgs boson that, that in order to confirm it, had to, 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 you know, we had to build this entire, you know, the whole lar Large Hadron Collider just to measure an effect so unfathomably small that you couldn't even do it in one measurement. You had to be thousands and thousands and thousands of measurement over time that mm. we predict there'll be this tiny, tiny ass bump. And even when they found it, they're all like, well, it's still so small. We don't want to jump the gun yet. Let's give it a few more years of doing it. So but we, we found... You know, we found something where we thought we'd find something, and that was exciting. And, and you can check it out in the documentary Particle Fever by uh, David Kaplan, who we'll get on. I think I'd love to have him on Night Attack. He's the physicist who said, you know, we should really be documenting this and started the documentary, and then it took on a life of its own. Really, really neat guy. I got to spend some time with him a couple weeks ago. Um, but, uh, you know, it's this exciting point of discovery, but, and these things happen. And here, I, I'm glad that NASA is spending some money on some fringe stuff like this. I'm a skeptic. I'm a doubter of a lot of things. I think a lot of things are just BS. But I do think that that is a good role for NASA to be doing this. Say, you know what? Let's look into some of these things. Not to spend a ton of money, but some. So in this Wired breakdown, they get into, they talk about like, you know, how it could be experimental error and said so that that's a factor to consider it. And, but they go in to explain some of the things that people didn't understand is that, uh, they said that they tried like a null thing where they had built this thruster without these grooves or something to channel it, but they still got mo movement. And people are like, ah, well, that shows the experiment's flawed. And this Wired article says, well, no, that just, it, they still got direction in the movement when they changed the direction of the polarity, whatever. It went the other way. It was just, you know, a, another way to sort of test for something. They did do it in a, a you know, in a, in a partial vacuum, which was like, five millionths of a tour, which I don't even know what that means, but I imagine I would probably suffocate and blow up like Arnold Schwarzenegger in Total Recall. <laughs> and they go in there, but one of the things that was really, really interesting, guys, is that they talked about the original EM drive propol proposal is, you know, very skeptical. Like the science in there, some of the conclusions, it's sort of an alternate view of how the world works, which people are sort of dubious of, but Tesla had crazy ideas and Tesla today, we're seeing, or we're running off of Tesla ideas, even though his ideas for how the universe worked was flawed. One of the implications is if you made a superconductor, now NASA had their version based upon something, but they changed it up of an idea called the EM drive. One of the proposals for the EM drive is if you made one using superconducting magnets in current, it would have a thousand times more thrust. And there's actually a paper out there where they explain we won't call it anti-gravity, but it's basically ship, you know, flying, you know, craft and hoverboards and stuff like that. Uh, oh, so you're saying, okay, so you're saying if they're able to hit that 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 three orders of magnitude more uh, increased force, and if uh, if energy isn't a problem, then the power of this engine would be enough to propulse against the the gravity of the planet Earth. Yep. I'm going to send you a link to a paper called emdrive.com. So it's, it's emdrive.com slash terrestrialapplications.html. Here it is right here. Take a look right now. Uh, wow, man. Uh, that definitely looks like a, uh, a hoverboard. <laughs> Probably be like more like a Blade Runner flying vehicle or a land speeder or something. But, uh, you know, the way things work. 99.99% it's complete BS. <laughs> well, I mean, sure. And, and, and again, that's the funny part, chance though. chance that we're working toward a hovercraft. Yeah. I mean, that, but, that, but I guess that's the whole thing, right? Is just because the odds are extraordinarily against it uh, doesn't mean we shouldn't try. The, the odds go to zero if we don't even try. Well, it's also what the hell else we got to do, man? Like, let's just, well, why not? You know, oh, you might as well. Let's explore these things. To put, it, to put it in context, now, physics challenges and engineering challenges are very, very different. And also, physics is a model based upon how we, it's our way of describing the observable, observable universe, et cetera. 
But we do acknowledge the idea that speed of light may not be constant and other things. There are all these sort of variations that we say, well, no, that doesn't violate because we account for this and these other things. And there might be frameworks in which these things work. This week, we're going to go tour the factory floor. All things work out. One of us is a security risk problem. Shave the beard, Justin, just saying. <laughs> we're going to go tour a factory floor where they're building the first stage for a rocket that hopefully within... 60 to 90 days is going to go take a payload up, and the first stage is going to land back down on solid ground. Man, and there, okay, there are so a fantasy five years ago. There, there, well, it, it, there are so many things. There, there are so many things that could go wrong and still have this be one of the the greatest successes in our lifetime. You know, like it could it could make it back, but not quite land and fall over. You know, get 99 percent of the way there. It could make it back and land. And they're like, that's great, we got it to do it. But look at how uh, look at all of these micro fractures all over everything, render it you know unusable for a second time. Like, yes, you know, we're trying to temper our enthusiasm. But come on, man! In in a hundred years, we went from you know the Wright brothers to uh, to 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 yawn, you know, whatever another flight, and well, like that could happen like, in the next hundred years. Like even if it's not the 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 short circuit to the future of like they could land it and then take it right back off. If we find that there are these thousands of micro fractures and we need to rethink what these rockets are made out of, or if there are elements that we can use to shield that specific kind of damage at least they know it you know they're, they're one step closer they, they're 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 moving on and i guess that's if there is one thing that we celebrate on this podcast that we always will look at and give three cheers it is momentum yes you know just working the will to work toward and the celebration of scientific momentum as sparked by curiosity that that is what we love, and that's why we celebrate and mark out for SpaceX like we were related to it, because uh, it, it, that is the uh, you know the best thing going today when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Wholeheartedly agree. Gentlemen, I saved a link, and I did not look at it. I thought this looked like a thing for weird things. I never got around to seeing it. It's a video clip. It's three minutes long. It's on CNN. I'll give you the headline. I thought maybe this would make a great investigation on our behalf here. Sure, little like okay. uh, like like we do on Night Attack. Instead of a a viral video breakdown, we'll do a news report breakdown. All sure. Right. So this is the uh, the headline is haunted houses ghost attacks news crew. Now, when I first read that, I'm like, <laughs> oh, cool, like some haunted house, like actual pay to go in haunted house. They like they scared a news crew. That was my reaction. No. This is supposedly, allegedly, that's all I know is the headline, and a Pennsylvania family claims their house is haunted and has the pictures to prove it, um, but apparently the ghost attacks the news crew. All right, here we go. This is, I just did a I've search. I've never seen this. I have no idea what we're about to see. All Let right, here we go. Oh, clips. the video's been removed by the user. All right. Oh, let's, no. We'll see. Hold on. It might be, it might be elsewhere. Later, fine. News crew. I sent you the link. Uh, oh, great. Yeah, okay, we do have it here. There we go. Copy link location. There we go. Pop. Pop. All right, here we go. Loading up right now. Uh, this is CNN, and uh, and we're executing this our fair use. This quiet from the rights. outside, but owner Deanna Simpson says several ghosts are haunting it, and Sorry. she's caught them in photos and recordings, including this one. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, already I'm, I'm All right, like... So just a, I mean, a standard uh, remote local news kind of thing. There's shots around the house and out of focus that come into focus. Uh, and then we are here for the proof shot. It is a still on a very creepy Siamese cat uh, uh, the structure. In this one. All right, here we go. The majority are bad, dark forces, unhuman. Just a couple of minutes into the interview, our photojournalist, Nick, felt his wrist burning. Are you okay? Did you get scratched? He was behind the camera, but Simpson knew what had happened right away. Oh my gosh. He'd been scratched. Simpson says it's happened to her, her husband, and friends many times before. That's unbelievable. God bless you. You know why? Because you're telling the story. Yeah. Because you're putting it out there. Because they All right, hold on, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> so, what has happened is, uh, this uh, middle-aged lady is talking to the camera. Uh, all of a sudden, she looks up and behind the camera, 
there is a guy who uh, the cameraman uh, says he's been scratched. He sits down. Brian, can you bring up that scratch for us? Let's oh, go ahead and get it. Okay. <laughs> the, the scratches. Uh, if, if you were to say mosquito bite, I'd be like, no, that's not even a mosquito bite. I mean, this is, uh, I mean, I'll, I'm, I'm jumping back right now, but uh, but uh, a mosquito's mom should be disappointed if that's and what <laughs> if that's what it brings but back. I I, <laughs> I have a theory here. I'd like to go in here after this though, because they, they mentioned a burning sensation too, which is yeah. suspect. Um, and I'm not going to accuse anybody of anything, but if I was an accusing person, not afraid of litigation, I would say somebody here is highly suspicious. <laughs> go gotcha. Ahead. Okay. Well, here we go happened to her, her husband, and friends many times before. That's unbelievable. God bless you. You know why? Because you're telling the story. Because you're putting it out there. Because they don't want, that is their, I'm just telling you right now. She's like the ghost version of Alex Jones. She's like, <laughs> she's like you know, they're trying to shut down your, uh, uh, the, the truth. <laughs> Pierce, I'm telling you. You have a ghost haunting situation for Deanna. What's her name? This man is trying to tell the story, and he's being shut down by the ghost All of right, Manati come on, let's, let's in this house. That is their way of a warning. She took us on a tour of the house. She shot video of this door. If that is you, would you please shut that door? <laughs> it is iPhone video of a door very slightly ajar, and when she says it on cue, the door closes. That Wait, let's, okay. Let me put it this way: Let's take ghosts out of the equation. If I had a, an eight-year-old who I'd said it's your job to close this door when I say, like, I would be disappointed in the performance of the eight-year-old because it's clear it's like they, 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 they there's a hiccup or something, and it just doesn't it doesn't quite close as smoothly as you like. It kind of kind of herky jerks its way closed. Would you please shut that door? Oh. See now, Brian, what you are failing to realize is this is concrete evidence of the ghost. A uh, new world order of, of spectral spirits that are haunting this lady's house. The GWO has put this together. Appears the Bilderberg Conference of Undead Spirits <laughs> gathers once every hundred years. And then, right, I need and more. They, I need more information, guys. All right, all right, all right, all right. They call their conference the Thriller. Here it is. You're, you want to scare me so bad? Show me. Shut that door. Go ahead. Shut that door. Oh my gosh, I about fell to my knees. I trembled because as soon as I said it, you never think that's going to happen. Simpson says she often sees orbs on this stairway behind the door. It leads up to the master bedroom. This determines whether I sleep upstairs or downstairs. This part of the master bedroom and bathroom is an area where we've seen a lot of activity so far, and both Simpson and her cat have been pushed down these stairs before. While we what? sit at the top of the stairs, Simpson... Man, what, the, what, what, what kind of ghost just is just an asshole? Like, like, like uh, uh, breaks through the barriers of time and space to twist your, uh, your photograph sideways and, and close mean, your doors. Fall. Zach Efron is asshole ghost <laughs> recorded on her cell phone camera she was hoping it would catch orbs but it shows something else too it looks like a hand oh what my, did you see that simpson says it looks like someone she's seen before and it's not a ghost it's a demon it's been seen in the basement when it came on all right hold on this is like next I, level I, stuff I uh yeah uh, uh <laughs> <laughs> okay, what I love is the idea, it's like, uh, I feel like she's playing the second arc of a campaign for Dungeons and & Dragons, and like, just now, you're like, wait a minute, guys, this is that demon we encountered at the other swamp! Oh! Let me just so, say this. Funny, funny, quick back, so we're watching video, and you see just a shadow move across the frame very, very yeah. quickly. The whole reason this show exists... And the reason the three of us are together are because Brian and I both have experience and love created magic involving making weird things show up on cell phones. And somebody said, hey, you guys should talk. And we came about it from totally different ways. Brian does this amazing freaky thing in a show. I have a trick. If you type in Andrew Main Ghost Vision, yep. 
which unfortunately has launched not more than you know, not a, not a what, what, was it the a sun number of video of of news videos like this where teenagers have made weird videos using this. If you type in Ghost Fish and Andrew Maine, you'll see that. Wait, wait, real quick. Uh, oh, do you have the link? Is it is it uh, is it uh, was it the Sun in the UK that ran a uh, yeah something like that? Amazing. Oh man, uh, dang it. Well, let's just say this: if that lady wanted to i would never suggest that she is faking these things no. or she is deliberately trying to manufacture impossible photos but oh, if oh, wait, she wait, wait. wanted to she could make a very compelling better looking creepier ghost trick by uh by by purchasing andrew main's ghost fishing. here's a headline from march 12 2009 the sun newspaper uh the, the headline reads the press mistakes ghost vision magic trick for a real ghost. Oh, this kid is the best, too. Yeah, this is my mommy's room. This is downstairs. This is Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and it's almost exactly what we just saw, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good! That's no, so the best good. thing about that video is that you see the bright, <laughs> the bright edge of it go by. Yeah, it's he, like, he, he, a terrible he, he, trick. He doesn't. Oh, let's not spoil the trick, guys. Yeah. Maybe. Come on, it's a genuine ghost, and uh, 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 but what's uh, amazing is the execution on it. Um, in fact, I wanted to see. Uh, let me see if I can do. Oh, man, part of me wants to go back. Um, I, I don't know. We're both talking about like the whole reason we know each other is because I made EVP a stage uh, effect where a ghost is conjured and appears on cell phones, and you made Ghost Vision, uh, which is effect uh, which is uh, more up close one on one. And I want to go and see. I haven't thought to look do this ever. Well, let's watch the rest of this video. This woman. Yeah, you got it. Boom. So far in this house, Nick has been scratched. I've been touched and pinched. We've seen strange <laughs> My light bet you have. and heard noises, and we haven't even gone down to the basement yet. So where is the place where you saw the shadow man picture? This photo was taken with a deer camera in the oh, basement. Good God. Uh, this picture right here is the shadow man. Um, he's about seven foot tall. Simpson says she's scared by what's happened, but she and her husband have lived in this home for seven years. Her grown daughters refuse to stay here. We put everything into this house and we do want his move, but we would have to list it at such a price to where we could recoup what we put in. Meanwhile, the family has invited mediums, researchers and priests to visit the home. The results of one investigation will appear on the Travel Channel show, The Dead Files. Simpson says there's a history of grisly deaths in the house. I have to prove to people our life. So that way they'd understand. Whatever you think, we weren't in a hurry to come back anytime soon. Okay, by the way, the come here thing is never uh, uh, explained, right? No, it just sounds like uh, like uh, somebody somebody kicked a doll and it made that noise. Yeah, like, like they don't explain, oh, we were recording and it said come here. They just are playing that. Um, Andrew, you're suspicious by this woman. Why would you say that I was suspicious of this woman? <laughs> because you said you were suspicious because the guy's wrist was burning. I, 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 I did not single out. I just said there's somebody suspicious in this video. I made no allegations of a specific person. <laughs> That's on you. Uh, all right. Then I'll go ahead and say it. Uh, they are very silly geese. All so <laughs> hypothetically, if you wanted to make somebody feel a burning sensation on their hand or their arm or whatever... Um, you would not be original at all. This would be something that's been done quite a lot in when people want to pretend to have this thing. It's actually the thing we do in stage magic, too, in mentalism magic. You, you can make this thing happen, and it's very, very easy to get away with it. Yeah, well, and, um, oh, man, do you, do you think this is a case that this was all an intentional con by the folks, and they decided to give, like, a... A proper seance experience. I mean, is it just a 21st century uh, media savvy version of a seance where it's like the seance begins the moment they walk in the door and then you, uh, uh, I, I don't know if I'm tipping methods or whatever, but like, like there are things that people would do um, 
I, I don't know. Is it, is it, is it, is it, man, this is interesting. Is it magic exposure? If you're explaining the way fraudsters do fake, I mean, that's what Houdini did, right? It, I mean, it's, it's, if it's something magicians are doing in their existing repertoire, then yeah, it would be. Well, I mean, you could rub an irritant, a little, little pepper spray on their hand. I, I, I would imagine would do, do it. do that. Um, it, that would make my skin burn. I, I, I would think, right? Maybe like, not, though. Maybe. I, have, I have a very oily uh, rhino hide that would probably <laughs> be impervious to mere human pepper spray. <laughs> so these are everything we saw is readily explainable within the, the inventory of things we're familiar with of methods and how to do and whatever. And there is a, uh, the, if you walk, look at some of the reports on like the Florida skunk ape. You know, the, the guy who sees it the most is the person who's the most suspicious, too. And this is a case, yeah. too, where it's like, oh, yeah, we have a travel channel show coming in here. And, like, you know, coming from a TV producing role, well, this is this this could have the appearance of somebody who really wants to get on TV. So this is something that I believe we, me and Andrew, talked about in the proto uh, version of Weird Things. Before Brian, uh, before we did the first official episode with the three of us, me and Andrew did an episode where we were just we talking about seven. One of my favorite Weird Things uh, conversation topics came up and we've never really touched on it again. But in the context of this report where she specifically says she would, they would like to sell the house, but it would be priced at a level that they would feel that they needed to recoup the money from being tortured for seven years. Sure. Do you think a scientifically provable haunted house goes for more or less than market value? Oh, more. Yeah, I would think more for sure, right? Well, especially if uh, if you're into... Okay, okay, think about it this way. Let's take it out of the realm of the paranormal. There are people who dig the idea of ghosts. If you told me and actually convinced me that Tony Stark once lived in this house, yeah. I will pay more for this house because I love Iron Man, and who knows? They say you might find a, a, a repulsor ray somewhere in the attic. It's like, yeah, dude, of course it would go more. So how much more? How much more does this lady what, get to sell What phenomenon are we looking at? What was that? What kind of phenomenon? What am I going to get for my money? All right. Do am you know I going to reliably is? be able to bring people over every night and have them freak the hell out? No, okay, okay. Here's, hey, you're here's, able to see the shadow man. The seven foot tall shadow man does a basement party at between the hours of nine and ten. He, he appears and he cackles. All my money, all the money I can borrow. So you listen. You you both right now are in for various reasons uh, Los Angeles because it is a place in which you can you can conduct a certain amount of business. You would be willing to move to uh, you know uh, Rando, Pennsylvania, to live in the Shadow Man well, house. I'm not moving there. I'm turning it into like a scientific experiment and attraction. I'm patenting this stuff. Ghost technology. I'm selling a lot of T-shirts. Is what I'm doing. Yeah. So you immediately turned it into, but all right, what do you think, like, the, but there are people who would want to live there, right? There were people I who turned would, it into would, a bed and breakfast. Oh, there we go. And Shadow Man's the, B&B. You get the yeah, experience, exactly. man. And it's and every B night B at 9 o'clock, the Shadow Man pops up and says, rate it five stars has, on Yelp. Has anybody made a paranormal Airbnb? Like an entire site dedicated to ghost tourism, where you have your different uh, sales pitches and your own Yelp ratings on how good the We're ghost is. Gold right now, baby. If you ain't doing it right now, Ghost B and B, man. Are you kidding me? This would be brilliant. With an incubus or succubus of your choice, <laughs> they smell like pot. <laughs> I'll tell you, that's the amazing thing. I don't know. Uh, so, so here's the thing. It's, it's almost like there's a nocebo effect where it's like, uh, uh, you know, a placebo, of course, you, you derive a positive benefit because you believe there's going to be a positive benefit. Uh, the, the reverse is when the witch doctor uh, shakes the, the death rattle at you, and then sure enough, you get sick. I mean, it's a very real effect, and, like, your bodies do funny things. Like, I'd imagine if you truly believed you were buying an honestly haunted house, you would have some pretty wicked kick-ass um, manifestations on your body, uh, including, like, for example, here's the weird part, is Ghost the pickies. more you pay, the more you believe, and the more impressive your body freaks out because you're terrified out of your mind. Well, that's kind of like uh, part of the idea behind voodoo. And, you know, voodoo really works if you believe in voodoo. Yeah. 
Uh, all right. Well, I know that we are kind of up against it because uh, Brian has uh, cord killers coming up. So you guys want to get to picks? Let's yes. get to picks. Uh, my picks, and I'm sure my picture will come back here momentarily, is I saw Guardians of the Galaxy a second time. It's still my pick. It's still so good. Uh, and it's like, and, I'm, and we were talking about this before b- at the beginning of the show. Andrew, you're so right. Like, like w- I see the flaws less and less, and I'm just going to love it more and more. So you're picking Guardians of the Galaxy again? Yeah, that's right. I am. I Me did. too. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> it's my pick too. Go see it again. Bring uh, all right. Thing. Real cheesy, guys, because I'm also going to pick Guardians of the Galaxy for the second time just for this reason. There, very rarely can I remember a movie kind of immediately touching off a, a kind of cultural, it just taps a cultural vein, you know, and I have seen more dancing Groot references over the last seven days than I can remember any kind of new science fiction movie sort of capturing everybody's imagination. Uh, it's the best. Go see I, it. I, and, and by the way, uh, watching it my sec- the second time uh, was a, a little bit different because the first time I saw it, I'm like, hey, I'm excited. This is the big thing we're doing. I'm out with my friends and so on. Uh, but the second time was uh, we, we had an extraordinarily exhausting uh, 16 hours, uh, like like we did tw- uh, 12 hours of vacationing, and then we went to Greg Grumberg's 36 hour uh, live stream video game play for uh, talkaboutit.org, the Epilepsy Foundation. Uh, we did that, and then I had to get up in the morning, and and I, so I got maybe two or three hours of sleep, and I just showed up just exhausted, but I got picked up by Bonnie and the kids, and I was just so thrilled. Yeah, you, you know how it's like you spend so much time white knuckling, you don't realize how you're white knuckling, and then you just kind of feel everything, you know, like, you know, you just, you just relax. We go to the draft house. The pre show at the draft house is 30 minutes of raccoon videos, and they're all hilarious. And then there's some great Guardians uh, stuff from the cartoons. And uh, whereas, like, the first time I saw it, I, I, I like choke up a couple of times, you know, because they open up with a minor spoiler here. The very first scene, first three minutes is the kid watching his mom die. Um, the second time I watched it, I like cried at all the happy parts because I'm like, I'm just thinking about all the joy in the world and how good movies still exist. And I'm here with my family and I'm exhausted. And, you know, maybe I've had a beer. I mean, it was it was amazing from beginning to end uh, to 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 weirdly the second time. I got to know when the great moments were happening and sneak a peek over at my kids and at my wife to experience them. And uh, and and there have been criticisms for uh, Dave Bautista's, you know, because he's a wrestler. His performance as Drax, you know, is is not what you would expect from a traditional actor. But I don't I don't care how we got to the place where he delivers his lines in that deadpan style, like this unironic, whatever, just talking like, no, no, sorry, so I wasn't good. listening. Yeah, that was trash, it's so Perfect. It was perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Yeah. He was, and I'm going to say this, Bautista was cast because he played Drax well. And yeah. like Marvel went through a whole thing with Thor and all these other roles. Like they interviewed every bodybuilder, every wrestler in the world, and they said, you know what, we're done with them. We just want to, we'll put, we'll put muscles on actors. Bautista earned that role on, his, on the skills of as an actor. And, and it's like, yeah, he's a big, thick guy who doesn't get metaphors and stuff like that. And it's very, very easy for people to go like, ah, oh, look. But it's like, that's – and if you read the comic books. Well, it's – exactly. Facts, it's, it's, you know. it's, it's, it's like, um, uh, no, it's not acting because – yeah, or or it's you know what it is? It's like when they criticize Mickey Rourke for the wrestler. They're like, he just played Mickey Rourke. And I'm like, well, that's convenient because that's the wrestler. And it's like yeah. that's exactly what it was. Uh no, I yeah, it, I I I find myself more times than not coming back to the lines of Drax, even more so than than Groot and Rocket Raccoon. Like the some of some of the lines I just uh, I, I I can't I can't get out of my head. And the one moment something else. <laughs> that, that's just kind of stuck in my head is in the in the climactic element of the third act, Drax in, in the Milano while this like, you know, big, uh, you know, nail biting. They're they're riding it into in, into battle. And he is just laughing maniacally, <laughs> just like scream laughing, like mm-hmm. as they as they crash land to bring our, our story to a climax. And it's just that is that's my reaction to that movie. It's yes. just 
amongst all the chaos, amongst all the tension, is just this maniacal scream laughing. And and that's what I, I love so much. Oh, my God. One of the most beloved actors of all time who has played one of the most iconic characters in multiple franchises and one of the most successful franchises ever was a bodybuilder by the name of Sean Connery. That's true. Now, Arnold Schwarzenegger, you're always aware it's Arnold Schwarzenegger. But here, you know, and like in kind of the cheesy one-liners, but like Drax was like, Blaine, you know, I was, well, it, I was that. I believe that character. I, yeah, no, I believe that uh, that Dave Bautista really was not paying attention when he said, "I'm so I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention." You know, it was it was amazing. Uh, and- there's so much, I mean, like, uh, and we can wax poetic about this. And, and by the way, if you want to listen to, to me and Scott Johnson talk about this movie for an hour and a half, you can download the spoiler cast that I did with him. You can find that on the Frog Pants Network. But uh, so much of this movie was so good because it was 10%. These, these, like, these trope kind of characters were just 10% different than you kind of expected. Even down to Ronan the Accuser, who, again, is almost at this point, it's its own you know, overcast for actor, uh, one movie villain guy, separatist from the alien race is kind of like a thing we've seen a, a million times. But just like that final interaction with him and Star-Lord just kind of brings it to that 10% different place where it's just like, oh, God, he's just so much more memorable. Yeah, man. And it's tough to uh, it's it's tough to pull off funny and engaging and douchebaggy. I mean, we haven't we haven't seen a character like uh, Star Lord since Han Solo. I really don't think I I, I can't think of anyone who's nailed it uh, since then. You know, this roguish c- scoundrel. Certainly, Iron Man. I mean, you're putting him in the in, in 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 the in the space of Iron Man, Tony Stark, and, right. and Solo, and and Indiana Jones. You know, the, there's a very specific type that he has kind of entered into. That that Mal- Pratt, and old, and, you know, I think, and and all and all saying that there, but I, I agree that there are these certain guys. That, you know, once every. 10 years or something like that, you get this archetypal, all this nails it. This is great. Actually, you know what? I do have another, um, if you want a little bit of a peek into the mind that directed Guardians of the Galaxy, go look up um, uh, James Gunn's PG porn. Because I've I've seen like two or three of them now. Uh, They were released in 2010 and they cracked me up. There's a lot of cursing, but but no actual pornography. Uh, But it's uh, very, very funny for, for on very different levels. Uh, no, it's it's very good. By the way, I, I very much was uh, was tickled now that James Gunn is like you know the biggest uh, director in, in Hollywood uh, for for the moment. Somebody tweeted him, uh, "Are you the guy from Scream Queens, the the reality television show that was produced by Joe, Joe Biagio, Biagio friends?" Uh, and he replied with, "Yeah, that's pretty much my main gig." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and by the way, I, here's the funniest part. I mean, it is a testament to the movie that not one of the three of us got around to even mentioning a uh, friend of the show and one of our favorite people on the planet, Michael Rooker's performance in there. Like, I mean, that's that's amazing. To, like, normally that should be all we want to talk about is how awesome our friend was in the in the movie. Oh, my God. No, Rooker was so good. And, and uh, it, it just makes me so happy that. Uh, James Gunn, I mean, a very loyal, seems to be a very loyal guy to the people that kind of stick with him. He keeps putting the same people in all of his movies. Uh, he's had a voice cameo from Rob Zombie in all of his movies, including as the uh, the audio pilot or the audio interface for the Ravager ship is is Rob Zombie. And only Michael Rooker, uh, or, or only in a James Gunn movie, does Michael Rooker have his character not only survive for sequels, right, but also gets... Uh, the like badass, you know, and not to spoil it, but he gets a very super uber badass scene, and and I was just so happy to see that. Yeah, it uh, it really was. Uh, oh, okay, look, we got to get ready for cord killers. Uh, sorry that we started a little bit late. Um, I just getting back from L.A., everything was kind of configured differently, so it took us a while to get on track. But um, for those of you watching live, we'll do night attack later on tonight. Uh, uh, old school with uh, with me and Austin, Justin and Oakland. Yeah, and I think uh, yeah, I think we're gonna we're gonna ride it just just me and you. It's gonna be a fun time. Oh, right on. Yeah, gentlemen, it's been weird. Doing the weird things dance. Doing the weird things dance. Totally left that last part in. <laughs> Oh, 
Googly doogly do. Hey, thanks for being patient, Zach. I know you like to get um, uh, get set up early er than this. Um, weird things. Um, what do we call on this one? Um, uh, burning ghost burn. <laughs> ghost burn. I'm gonna write ghost. B oh ghost B and B there you go oh there we go okay and I will post this and then I will get out of your hair while you reset and um, I will bring up the computer and I'll move this mic over here because we had to do some different things because uh, the other mic is is off um, if if uh, this camera the reason ah, it keeps, ah, it's pointing right at me yeah, this camera the reason it keeps popping out is because I guess Brant hooked up the extension cord on there not realizing if the HDMI goes too long then we lose then then we lose signal from time to time that's part of the reason that that this was happening um, and uh, I am uploading very shortly uh, thank thank you uh, thank you both guys for being so patient while I kind of reset everything up. It's, uh, right. it's been Even a while. Even though you're out here a lot, it's the only time I get to see you. So. <laughs> we'll uh, all be together next week, though. So excited. Yeah, finally. Finally. Uh, By the way, we had to actually carve out time to record a weird things when we're out there. Yeah, well, I figure, I figure maybe we should do... Do you guys want to record something? Like, we'll, we'll do it offline, maybe, and then... Um, Maybe in the parking lot right after. Yeah, no, no, I wouldn't mind doing that. Like, like I feel like our enthusiasm would be palpable. And in fact, maybe we could have special guest correspondents, uh, Tom Merritt, Bonnie the Invisible Wife, and one Penelope Ray Brushwood. Well, I'm going to... I can bring audio stuff down there. Or like, I, I also have it at my place, but I know my place is on the other side of the planet compared to... Uh, uh, for where you are, Andrew. Well, but yeah, you're closer to SpaceX than I am. Okay. Weird things. 14. Uh, and then, well, of course, we're going to do Night Attack Saturday night, right? I don't care about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we will do Night Attack Saturday night. Uh, how long are you around for, Justin? Friday and Saturday. So there's no sticking around till Sunday night? Um. No, well, I wasn't planning on it. My flight's on Sunday morning. Uh, well, if you were able to go home Monday morning, then I was thinking that would really be the one free Sunday night opportunity. Where oh, maybe, to go to Harmontown? Yeah, by the way, I was thinking like I, uh, uh, he teased one night uh, uh, before and he's saying like, oh, there's going to be special celebrity guests. Might want to come next week. And I was like, oh, man, I wonder if, oh, well, if only it could work out to go. And then the special celebrity guests included an hour with Dana Carvey and Tenacious D. Yeah. It was, I was just like, what? It was amazing. Uh, okay, uh, I am out of the way.